Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. Yeah, I'm filming myself walking out of the house. I'm in a good mood. We are getting somewhere with a flickering on the LED tail light. So that video went up about 18 hours ago. And as normal, you guys have been awesome with quite a few suggestions on what it could be. However, I did mention it yesterday, but I did go through this a fair bit with my old E53. Uh, now that car was an LCI, it was a 2004 model, and it would have had a slightly different light control module to this car, uh, but I did use these exact tail lights. Now with my old car, I, I tried everything I could find on the forums, but I reckon I might have made a mistake. But anyway, basically a lot of you guys did say to code out the bulb warnings. Now this car, when I put these lights in yesterday, I was expecting to get some bulb warnings because I did on my old car. As they come out of the box, they got bulb warnings. Hopefully you noticed in that video, no errors. Now I thought maybe they've updated the uh, load resistors that are supplied with the units, but they haven't. There's more going on. Now a lot of you guys said code out the bulb warnings and also, the settings you can change in PA Soft to make it work. Now, I never had PA Soft a few years ago, and today I have been messing around with PA Soft, trying to get these bloody things working properly. Now, I will, I do want to show you something in PA Soft because I think it's brilliant. But last night, literally, I clicked upload on that video, and then I started playing with the iBus app. And I just want to show you something quickly. So, with the iBus app, it has got a coding option, and then we can select light control module. Sky News Australia. Uh, okay, read coding data. We've got light control module four. There's all the numbers off the LCM. Coding data read was successful. So in here, it, this is that cheap iBus app that I did the video on a couple of days ago. You've got certain settings that you can change for the light control module, which is nice and handy. Now you can see here that we have got LED tail light active, which I did have. Now I think that actually, and I'm, don't quote me on this, but I think that does stop the uh, the warnings coming up on the dash. That was not active, but I did turn it on. And I was also playing last night with voltage brake lights here, and you can run, I think it was set at 2.7, and then I left it at 3.6. Basically, the brighter I went with this, the less flicker I would get, but at five volts, it was just a little bit too bright. So I ended up putting it at 3.6, and it was sort of a happy medium with the flicker. I then went in and read a few of the comments, and then everyone got me thinking, because I was sort of, I was pretty comfortable with it like that, and I think I mentioned it yesterday, I never ended up fixing it on my old X5. It was sort of, it was there, but yeah, I just sort of dealt with it. But anyway, now that we've got these, all of you excellent people encouraging me to do things properly, uh, it was bugging me. So I've been playing with this a fair bit today, and the first thing I started playing around with was PA Soft. Now if I just open up here, we've got coding data for the light control module, and I have been playing with a few different things. So basically, what I've got here, um, these are all the cold checks. Now, I haven't changed any of those. That's exactly how this light control module has been from the previous owner. So I can only assume that the car that the light control module come from had already had the cold checks and the hot checks removed for certain bulbs. So the one that was sort of relevant to what we're messing around with, the rear left side light and the rear right side light, they are essentially the tail lights. They've both got the cold checks turned off and the warnings for the cold checks turned off. Hot check is still on though, but I think it's gonna be okay. Um, anyway, PWM value. Now this is where I want some more advice on this and it's these two values here that I've been playing with. Hopefully the GoPro is picking it up. But it was set to 72 when I started playing. Did some research and it looks like um, BMW used the value of 72 for their factory LED tail lights. So an E46 LCI coupe that has LED tail lights they are set to 72 on those and also the led lights in i think the led tail lights in an e39 lci from what i was reading they're also set to 72. however on this i noticed that the center brake light was set to ff now this is a pwm value i've done a quick bit of research on pwms and it looks like it's basically the pulse the pulse width modulation value now this isn't a set voltage it's something that i do not understand but from what I can tell, FF is full power, where anything less than FF is, is a percentage that the power will pulse, and it's milliseconds that they pulse, which is why, like, this is how they drive LEDs, apparently, and if you pulse them at the correct frequencies, the human eye can't see they're flickering. So I was messing around with this thinking, this is gonna be my fix. If I can set it to FF, I, I noticed that the left tail light is set to 8D, and the brake lights on these, they don't flicker. You get no flicker at all with these aftermarket brake lights. So what I did, well, first I tried FF and we still got a little bit of flicker. Then I tried 8D and it's more flicker. 
and I went back to 72, which is the original value, and that was more flicker again. Um, yeah, so basically with the tail lights on, we get much less flicker when I've got it set to FF, which should be 100% PWM signal. Okay, and I was sort of happy with that. Then I started the car up, and then the flickering when the engine's running is about the same as what it was last night when I was just messing around with these settings. In fact, I better get out of that because we don't need to do any coding. Um, anyway, long story short, back with my old car. Um, as I said at the start of this, I didn't have PA soft, but we were doing lots of settings in NCS Expert. We did everything we could, and I spent like months messing around with that thing. I eventually ordered some capacitors. Now, I fitted those capacitors to my car, and it didn't fix it. Uh, so I removed them and I'm starting to think maybe I just cocked it up. Hey, we all make mistakes, but I just want to show you these capacitors quickly. Uh, now this is the capacitor that I bought years ago with the shitty wires that I sold it on. And it is a 25 volt 6800, is that microfarad? Please correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, 6800 UF uh, capacitor. And I went and found them in the toolbox. I've plugged one in and this light no longer flickers. So with PA soft set to FF, the, the hot and cold checks as they are, we don't get flickers. And I'll show you. And hopefully the GoPro will even pick it up. My phone does pick it up. So I'm going to start the car. And tail lights on. Let's see how the GoPro sees it. So hopefully you can see there, we are pretty damn solid. Where this side, without the capacitor, is flickering. Now the GoPro does make it seem worse. In fact, the GoPro makes it seem one hell of a lot worse. But the way I describe this is, instead of being 100% bright, every every second it dips to 80% brightness. That's the best way I can describe it to my eyes. Again, people's eyes will probably see them differently. But yeah, we're still getting the flicker. Obviously the settings are the same. The only difference is that capacitor. So I'm thinking I was just a knobhead a few years ago and I mustn't have wired the capacitors in right, uh, which is very possible. Anyway, I'm gonna wire the capacitor into that side, show you how we did it, because it is pretty simple. And from memory, I can't remember where I got these from, but I think they were like cents. They were not a lot of money. Um, the postage was significantly more than the capacitors cost, but I'll see if I can find some to put some links in the bottom. All right, let's get it wired in because it is just a matter of connecting it to power and the signal for the tail light, and we'll see how we go. But once I've got that done, I want some people's opinions on how I should set PA soft for the brightness because I think that is now too bright. I need to go and get David when he's finished work um, to check the brake lights because I'm a little bit worried that that is as bright as a brake light maybe? Maybe? We'll see. Actually, you know what? You guys can see. Let me get a tripod. All right, you're on a tripod. So let me know in the comments below, because this video will probably go live before Dave checks. Is that brake light much brighter or do I need to change some settings? Can I get away with that? Who knows? Let me know. And I guess I'll wire that other capacitor in because we need the capacitor in to stop it flickering. Hey, and then, I've got another new toy as well. It's been a good day, all right. Okay, still gotta sort out this wiring mess from all the stereo stuff, but hopefully you guys can see that. We've got the black and the green wire coming off the aftermarket tail light harness. I'm still using these dodgy wire taps. I've got heaps of them, so I'm just gonna use them until we're out. And then I might switch over to the T-taps, which quite a lot of guys do recommend. Squeeze her in. There's one. And then the earth. Squeeze that in. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Probably not though. And then connect the negative to the earth. Oh, these things are always a bit dicky. That's it. Tuck it out of the way for now. And let's test them. So the tail lights are on, 
and we're not getting any flickers. Damn, I wish that worked on my old car. I must have just wired the capacitors wrong. So somebody did mention yesterday about the capacitors and I, look, I didn't dismiss it, but because I didn't have luck with the capacitors on my old car, I didn't rush to do it today. I thought I'd try with PA soft and see if it sorted out. But I am curious about the brightness. What I might do, what I might do, Sorry, I can't help you with that on shut up Siri. Uh, what I might do is maybe put the PA soft value back to what it was on, which was 72, and then we'll see what they look like when they're set at 72. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so I'll show you how to code PA soft because it's awesomely easy as well. Now, with PA soft coding, you need the car on. You do need to make sure that PA soft is connected. So we just cancel this bit, get out of that module, and we'll just go car identify. The ignition is on, continue. So it is connected to the car. Then we'll go units, light control module, coding data. Come on. Now I'll read coding data just so it gets the current coding data. Sweet, that's got all the new stuff. And then we'll just go light coding. Interesting. Huh. The iBus app just freaked out as it connected to the module. Anyway, so this was set to 72 before I started playing today. And again, without the capacitors, having it set to FF was the least amount of flicker I could get. And then we go, so basically just changed it back to 72 because that's what they were when we started. We'll go right. And then earlier I'd get a little chime to say it was done. Finished. Car didn't want to chime this time. Uh -huh. But you can see the module's doing something. All right, so we'll turn the car off. And just let the module go to sleep. Well, basically just, I wait for that error to go. A few moments later. Sweet. I'm happy with that. Turn that on, turn the tail lights on, and let's see if they're flickering. They're not. Can you guys see that? But I still think they're really bright. Like, I mean, it is overcast today, but that seems really bright. We're going to tripod it again. And I shall shut the this one down so you can see the high stop light. Yeah. Do we get enough of a difference for the brakes? Who knows? Oh well, look, I think we fixed the problem. All you need is a capacitor. I wish I sorted it out back in the day. So there we have it. I'm starting to think I don't even need PA soft. Well, actually you will need PA soft to code out the bulb checks, but, and the, the PA soft's by far the best software I've used for coding, well, easiest, I can actually use it where NCS still sort of freaks me out a little bit. Um, yeah, and they are the capacitors I've used. 25 volt, 6800 microfarad or whatever that means. And I will try and find the link where I bought these a few years ago. Um, I think it was, I think I just got them on eBay, but I'll try and find that link and I'll put that down below. That's the flickering fixed. Thank you to everyone. Now I Oh God, I'm getting ahead of myself. Somebody did mention the capacitors, but anyway, we've got it done. You need to code out all the bulb checks and install capacitors. The reason you still need to code the bulb checks out is it will stop, I think every 30 seconds on a certain check, it will actually turn the tail lights off, then turn it on to do the check and then turn them back on. Like it's all a microsecond thing, but that will show up on the tail light. So you'll still get that normal flickering if you've got the checks on. All right, nice, easy, quick video. We're working through all the problems and getting them fixed properly. I love it. Um, now, what I was actually planning to do today and I may still make a start on is this. I'm pretty excited about this. So with my old E53, I had quite a complex 360 surround view camera. And it was the type of camera that um, 
when I had it up on the screen, it looked like there was a camera looking at the car, projecting like a virtual image of the vehicle when you were parking. It was super cool. It was like a modern surround view camera. Um, and I really liked it, but it took a long time to install. It was like a day and a half to install it because you've got to put cameras in the door mirrors, the front, the boot, and then the calibration took ages as well, lining all the cameras up and programming everything. Um, I found this just before Christmas. Now it is a single camera unit, if I can get it open, from a Toto. It's the only company I've seen that do it. So you know it's good. Um, but yeah, basically it's a Chinese camera company and what they've managed to do, they're using a single camera to make a panoramic camera system. And I've seen some videos, I'll try and overlay some videos, but I'm really looking forward to trying it out. That's gonna go on the car. Basically, I'll start it tonight and hopefully finish it tomorrow. So that'll be tomorrow's video, the reverse camera. But I'm stoked we've got the LED tail lights fixed. Guys, thank you very much for watching and thank you for your help. You made me fix this because I probably would have just left it if you weren't commenting. All right, thanks again and we'll see you tomorrow for some cool panoramic single camera thing. It's wicked how that works, if it works.